I'm Vienna Sparks, the CEO of MabLab. We test for laced drugs and spike drinks to ensure that no one overdoses ever again. It's a lot more big. I walked into class on a Monday morning, looking for my lab partner's familiar face. Cassie was always there when we were starting our new week's chemistry experiments, but this week, she wasn't there. When I inquired about why, I was hit with a reality that changed my life forever. That she had overdosed while taking laced recreational drugs. And the thing is, Cassie never could have known those drugs were laced to begin with. However, Cassie's story is not unique. There are more than 109,000 deaths that occur every single year from laced drugs and drinks, and more than 5.2 million injuries, equating to a $12.4 billion cost to U.S. medical system. However, current market solutions only test for just fentanyl, which is a fraction of the leading lacing agents co contributing to this 109,000 number. So here at MabLab, this doesn't have to be the case. Here at MabLab, we built a 5-in-1 rapid test capable of detecting these five substances with unparalleled accuracy in a matter of seconds. Our solution is patent defensible and is able to give users results with the similar technology to COVID-19, which is familiar with control and test line. Additionally, our solution does not require FDA regulation as a class one exempt medical device. Our solution is also affordable and accessible, coming in at just a $5 price point with a 70% profit margin that we only expect to increase with economies of scale. So now let's take a closer look at how the end user would use our test strip. So imagine my co-founder Sky here is on his way to a music festival. Sky loves having a good time, but Sky wants to make sure he can have a good time safely. So when Sky's friend hands him something, he's not sure what's in it. So Sky wants to make sure that could not potentially be fatal. So all Sky needs to do is take around five to eight grains of the given substance, place it into the water-based buffer solution, then take out a MabLab test strip and dip it into the water-based solution. Submerging for three to five seconds, he's able to remove the test strip and then the results will start to show almost instantaneously. Although we say wait the full two to three minutes as indicated on our test strip packaging as the results grow darker with time. So let's circle back at the end of our presentation to see if Sky can party safely and enjoy his time at Coachella. Now, let's take a closer look at the competitive landscape. Our biggest competitor is a company called BTNX. They sell about 40 million test strips annually, equating about 80 million in revenue. However, they only test for just fentanyl, leaving those other lacing agents undetected. Additionally, they lack accuracy in their results, which is very problematic when we're dealing with things that could be fatal in as little as two to three grains of a given substance. Our other indirect competitors are companies like Confirmed Biosciences, which are post-exposure tests, meaning you ingest the substance and then pee in a cup afterwards, which is not great at preventing that overdose to begin with. And then we have competitors like lab proficiency testing, where you send a sample off to a remote laboratory, wait two to three weeks, and often pay upwards of $500, which is not affordable or accessible to the average consumer. So here at MapLab, we're going B2B, selling to university health services, harm reduction centers, and local and state governments. We chose these three B2B partners as they have existing distribution pipelines in place for fentanyl test strips, making the adaptation for our test strip very easy. We also have over 100K in pre-revenue sales with these different partnerships, some of them shown here on the screen. To scale, we really plan to go to plan to go B2B to C, to CVS Walgreens, as well as bars and restaurants and music festivals. So following on that Coachella strand, we want to make sure that people like Sky can party safe with our potential partnership at Coachella in 2025 that we're currently discussing. Additionally, we have other B2B targets in mind, like law enforcement, fire departments, as well as veteran agencies, all of which have a vested interest in keeping the communities that they serve safe. The market size for drug and drink testing is frankly huge, with our initial beachhead being over $3 billion, detailing just drug consumers in the United States who are already using fentanyl test strips and alcohol consumers who have had their drinks spiked. I know I wouldn't want my friends or daughter to be at risk of having their drinks spiked. So why now for MabLab? First and foremost, we've seen a huge legalization of drugs in the United States, with a decriminalization of substances like marijuana in California, as well as New York. For example, California has actually been following this legislative change right here, where they've been mandating fentanyl test strips to be offered at universities, as well as bars and other concert venues. And second, is there been a big injection of public funding, with $26 billion being allocated to fund harm reduction solutions like ours. And lastly, so many people know someone like lab, my lab partner named Cassie, with 40% of Americans having a personal tie to someone who has passed away from a drug overdose. 
Right now, we're raising our seed round for $2.5 million, which will take us all the way through our market launch and also help us convert those existing LOIs to paying customers. It will also help us launch our AI ML data integration, which allows us to do outbreak tracking and predictive modeling for new LASIK agents popping up <coughs> that we're not currently testing for. Additionally, later down the line, we plan to scale on that B2B to C front, as well as launch a secondary test on the market, which will be primarily targeting allergens, which is all made possible with our existing intellectual property. This is the wonderful team that makes it all possible. Myself and Sky are both co-founders, both with previous startup experiences coming out of institutions like Columbia and Harvard. We're joined on the scientific side by four postdocs who are leading their industries in structural biology as well as immunology, and joined by our marketing lead, Carly, who's pretty famous on TikTok, so helping us destigmatize testing once and for all. So now, let's see if Sky can party safe. As you can see here, there's only one line on the test strip, indicating that the test ran successfully, but there's no deadly substances like fentanyl or xylazine present in the strip. So Sky, go ahead and enjoy Coachella. <laughs> so together, let's end all overdoses from laced drugs. That way, nobody has to lose a friend like we lost Cassie, and no one has to go to school worried that their lab partner's not going to be there, or no one has to send their daughter off to college worrying that her drink is going to be spiked. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mab Lab. Judges. I'm, I'm really curious. A, a, a major part of this is the behavior change of knowing to test in advance. Like, how do you see that and encourage the behavior change of people having the strips with them at the right time? And what's, what's the, the impetus for them to, to test a, a drink or whatever it may be? Yeah, so one thing we're really going for is a similar strategy to drunk driving. So if you have a friend on a night out, you leave your drink, go to the bathroom, you want your friend to hold you accountable. So they have a test strip. It's pretty easy to carry in the back of your phone pocket, in your wallet. But another goal for us is getting to different accessible places. So different bars, restaurants, different universities, frat parties that have test strips on hand. It could be a bucket, it could be a embedding machine, anywhere you can pick up a test strip bring it easily and then test your drink. We've already seen these behavioral changes starting to take place with people actively picking up test strips and countertops on bars or as well as going to parties and they've already just been able to quickly grab and go. And we've seen the market incre increasing year over year with 40 million being sold this year and then substantially less in the years prior. So we're seeing that increase and that shift in behavioral change as well. At a $5 price point, how does it compare to like a fentanyl test strip? Yep, so the current fentanyl test strips cost anywhere between $1.50 all the way to $7 per test. So our thinking is the closest substitute for them is to create five different test strips, one for each of the five things we're testing for. So it'd be about $5 to that $25 price point. So but it still feels like psychologically going back to Chris's point on the behavior change at a $5, that's, like, that's quite a premium. And so how do you sort of get people on board with, with this behavior change? Yeah, so a couple of things there. Specifically for university health students, we recognize that $5 is a substantial amount. They'll be able to get it for free from their university health service, as well as local members of the community going to local nonprofits that we're currently partnering with, like the New York City Office of Nightlife. They'll be able to pick up a test strip there as well for free. And then in terms of the behavioral change, we're really looking to partner with different educational programs. So we're running a couple of different pilots with universities, as well as those local nonprofits that are actively already educating people about test strips about Narcan and these other harm reduction tools that are coming up. And we could plan to continue to help increase that education, both through social media and really building a brand around MabLab, which we've already seen a lot of success doing with um, actually partnering with different fraternities who are actively promoting these on their college campuses and things like that. So I've heard of the fentanyl test strips and we've all certainly heard of the rise of deaths and overdoses around them. But um, so there must be like a lot of attention on this problem. And you mentioned some competitors, but how hard is it really to to replicate what you're doing. Certainly there are tests for all of these substance, substances, not just fentanyl out there already. So how hard is it really to put it all in one stick? There's only a test for a few of them, um, namely fentanyl and xylazine. They do lack that substantial amount of accuracy. Currently on the market, it's between 80 to 95%. Our early trials are between 99.5 to 99.9% .9 accuracy, which is substantially improvement of care there. And same can be said for our limit of detections. So we have improvement that way. And then in terms of plating multiple tests or testing for multiple substances on a test strip, that's what our IP is on. Um, so we'll be able to be able to test and it's really difficult to replicate given the barriers of cross reactivity, which is the barrier we were able to overcome. And today's market, I think on purpose, uh, you guys are going B2B and then B2B to C. The current market, how is it split between those two segments from your competitors? So if somebody is doing like 80 million as you showed, how much do they get from each segment? 
Yeah. So our competitors have primarily been relying on D2C sales, where people were coming to purchase them in bulk yep. and then selling them to these harm reduction centers. But that's led to a really fragmented market, also a lack of reliability due to those use cases of them, these tests not being super accurate. So people are really looking for a more comprehensive solution that's also more accurate, which has been a big opportunity for us to really establish those recurring partnerships and generate recurring revenue through those different B2B partnerships that we're currently partnering with. And to Anne's follow-up question, uh, how low can you get the cost of this the cost of goods, right? Like, is there scaling issues that you don't have it? Where can this go? Yeah, so we're coming at it about 80 cents for the CDMO component currently. We can get that as low as 40% into 2026 is what we're anticipating, which would bring our COGS down substantially and up to around 80 to 85%. But where could you price it then? Because your cost of distribution is different than building a D2C brand. Yeah, we could so definitely- do you need to do it at $5? Why isn't, if you want, mass market, right? Why can't it be lower? Yeah, it could definitely be lower. We're starting off the $5 price point initially after doing some price testing with the different B2B partners. So the question we ask is, what would you pay for it? What's an expensive price? And what's a price that's so expensive that you wouldn't pay for it? After doing that testing, $5 seems to be a good point for the B2B market. Something we are considering for the retail market or for the D2C market is having a sort of wholesale price. So it could be as low as $3, $2 even, given that a COGS is about 80 cents for the test strip itself and an additional for the memory pad. With the uh, f sort of, if we're phase one, go to market, um, obviously it's a huge problem and obviously we're sorry about your lab partner's uh, personal situation. Um, what are some of the uh, two or three objections you hear from people not be willing to sign an LOI with you? Is that cost, uh, like some a lot of judges have asked you, or is that something else? Yep, so there's two categories of the B2B partners I sort of describe as. Number one, the people who already give out fentanyl test strips. It's pretty easy for us because the cost of friction to switching over to a very similar use case is pretty low. So they understand the concept. Um, a bit of a harder sell is the people who don't give out the fentanyl test strips already. Um, so for them, we describe it as more of an insurance play. If you're in university, for example, if it's a solution as cheap as a $3 price point to the $5 price point, might as well have a few fentanyl test strips or some of our test strips in place to avoid negative press in the media from the friends, family members of that person who overdosed on campus. So having our solutions in place to prevent against that negative backlash. Even at $1.50, it was your competing product that's the only test fentanyl. There's still a lot of people who don't want to uh, do it. Um, what, what could get them to change your mind? Yeah, it's primarily been due to the rise of overdoses. We're seeing more people growing aware. Um, we've kind of seen a similar analogy to like the condoms in 1980s where people were very opposed to using it at, at first and thinking that it was either gonna encourage sex or what is this new thing that I'm not used to. Then we saw a lot of sort of behavioral change and it's kind of the norm now more or less. So we're looking to almost ride the rave of the same behavioral change we're seeing currently. People are actively carrying Narcan in cities like San Francisco and New York, as well as Chicago. People are already starting to use fentanyl test strips and picking them up at their local CVSs in cities like New York as well. Um, so we're really looking to help facilitate that behavioral change as well through those different components of the educations, um, educational partnerships that we're working on as well as leveraging social media. We've already seen a big success um, on the college front with the social media and we're continuing to really play that out as well. Another thing is that we mentioned, mentioned before, um, states like California are now requiring different state-run universities, community colleges, bars yes. and nightclubs to have testers in place. So if they don't have it already, they will soon. Yeah, and I think just seeing that behavioral change as well, something we've noticed is we're currently negotiating with Coachella and um, a couple other music festivals we anticipate having their test trips at their facilities as well. So we're seeing that if these bigger organizations are actively promoting this, we've seen the demand is there as well. Yeah, your kind of analogy makes a lot of sense. It definitely was the issue initially, yep. I'm really curious, in, in a college setting, there could be at a fraternity party, even thousands of drinks, so you know, is, is, it, uh, is it expected that you test every drink as you're going or is, are there rules and examples of best practices of like, hey, this was a high risk situation because I went to the bathroom or whatever it is. Like, how do you think about maximizing the, the sort of return on, on It's the been a long time since we've been oh, yeah. in a frat party. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, that thousands is thousands of drinks for Chris. Yeah, so what we've noticed at college parties is people either, um, if they walk away from their drink or someone hands them something who they don't know, being able to test, or if someone hands them a drug, like um, in Sky's example at Coachella, someone hands them something, he's not sure what's in it, he wants to make sure he's being safe, there's another solution there. We've noticed that people are actively encouraging their friends to test in front of them or testing just because they don't want to see their friends overdose. Um, 
um, I went to the school at Columbia and there was several people just in my grade that ended up in the hospital after like our big music festivals that we have on school just because people were taking stuff. Um, and I think a big part of that was being able to quickly encourage their friends to test us. We'd rather not have to go get you from the ER. And there's been a big social shift where it's almost seen as cool to test where it's like, oh, I'm gonna take my car home because I've had a few drinks. It's no, take the Uber home, be safe. We want it, we value you as a friend. And we've seen that same thing. So going back to your example, um, people are actively testing um, their drinks if they step away from it. And we're also facilitating a few examples of that. If you step away from your drink, here, have a keychain quickly to be able to take out a test strip, test your drink, go to the bathroom, same thing. Or if there's like a big punch bowl, for example, yeah. but test your fin, see if there's anything in that to begin with. All right, give it up for Mad yeah. Lab. Thank you.